Hello, welcome back to Miss Coulson teaching chemistry. And if you are new here, go ahead and smash that subscribe button. <laughs> All right, so. <laughs> Sorry, what? <laughs> Say it again. Keep going. Uh, there's a glitch going around YouTube lately. It's been unsubscribing people. Can you just please check that subscribe button and make sure you're subscribed and then it's just going to go. Check that subscribe button, everybody. <laughs> Smash it. Check it. The works. All right. First of all. No likes? I don't care about the likes. I don't do it for the likes, you know? There, there, is, there is no clout <laughs> in content creation here. All right. Um... Now I'm nervous about what I'm actually going to say. Stoichiometry is the study of quantitative relationships between the amounts of reactants used and products formed in a chemical reaction. So we're going to say the amount of reactants used and the products formed by a chemical reaction. This is based on the law of conservation of mass. And we have learned multiple times now that the law of conservation of mass tells us that matter is neither created nor destroyed. So matter is neither created nor destroyed in a chemical reaction. So we know that the mass of the reactants or our starting materials has to equal the mass of our products or the things that we end with. So really, we use stoichiometry to tell us how much of a specific product should be formed or how much of a specific reactant will be used up. Um, we can relate those things to one another, and all of this kind of is centered around your balanced chemical equation. So stoichiometry is used to tell chemists, my pen's not working, how much um, product I'm going to put in quotes, should be made or how much reactant is used up. So like I said a minute ago, stoichiometry is really based around the balanced chemical equation. So we will use this. Um, and specifically the coefficients in our balanced chemical equation to tell us the number of individual particles and the number of moles of particles. This one is going to be huge, so we'll come back and talk about this a lot. And then we can also figure out the mass of the reactants and products using that mole ratio or using the moles of particles from our balanced chemical equation and the molar mass. So I actually want to jump down to page three. Do you guys need that? Can I scroll? Page three, where it says molar mass at the top. So I have a little throwback thing in here for molar mass. Does anyone remember what molar mass is? The mass of a mole. Okay, yes. So we'll be like a little bit more specific. We're going to say mass of one mole of a substance. We measure molar mass in grams per mole, so this will be our unit for that. However, we often use it as a ratio where it's either written as number of grams that are in one mole or the number of, um, or that one mole is equal to a specific number of grams. So I like to give the equivalency here of like miles per hour. So if we, I'm going to write in a different color just so you don't get it mixed up. So if I said MPH, miles per hour, you don't necessarily have to write this, but I just want you to follow along. If I said, for example, that you were going 80 miles per hour, and I said that you were driving for one hour, how many miles did you go? Okay. If I said that you drove for 80 miles, how long must you have been driving? 
So you see, you can write it either way, and it's still giving you the same information. Molar mass is the exact same. It does not work to put that with a different number of hours. Miles per hour is how many miles in one hour, or if you drove one hour, that's how many miles you would have gone. Molar mass is the same thing. Molar mass is always relating to one mole. It is grams per mole, meaning grams per one mole always. You can go, you can drive for more than one hour, but that's going to change that number too. So if, if you are using the unit miles per hour or grams per mole, it's always talking about one either mole or hour, whatever it is that you're talking about. So remember that molar mass is always just one mole. Always, every single time, it is going to be one mole. Do you remember where we get the information for molar mass? If I ask how many grams per mole of a substance exist? Periodic table. So you're going to need your periodic tables. I already have mine pulled up. You should grab yours. Yes. That's fine. We'll bleep it out. All right, that's your consent. <laughs> and then once you have your periodic tables, go ahead and flip back to the front page of your notes. So I have a chemical equation here that is the reaction between iron and oxygen creating Fe2O3. This is the formula for rust. Um, so first we need to balance it. That's what these blanks are here for. If you are at the point where you don't need an RNP chart, you don't have to show your work for that. Um, in this one, I am going to show it out to the side just so that we can keep track of the, oops, just so we can keep track of the atoms. That's like a plug. Okay. So I have iron and oxygen. On my reactant side, I have just one iron and I have two oxygen atoms. And on my product side, I have two iron and three oxygen atoms. So right away, where can a coefficient help me? And what coefficient? A two in front of iron. Okay. So two times one iron makes that two. And then? A 2 in front of Fe2O3. 2 times 2 iron gives me 4 irons, and then 2 times 3 oxygens gives me 6. And then change the 2 in front of Fe2O3 to 3. Okay. Okay. So when you change it, that means you're completely getting rid of it. Put a 4 there. Good. Right? So we have 4, 3, 2 as our coefficients. What we haven't paid a lot of attention to up until this point is what your actual count of the atoms ends up being. So what this is really telling me is that on my reactant side of the equation, I have a total of four atoms of iron and six atoms of oxygen. On my product side, I have the same. I have four atoms of iron and six atoms of oxygen. And so when we take this and we're using our coefficients, how we're going to start using it is by saying for every four atoms of iron, I needed to react three molecules of oxygen, and that produced two formula units of Fe2O3. And then underneath that, we can also use the same um, terminology for our moles. So we have four moles of iron, three moles of oxygen, and two moles of Fe2O3. So all we did to figure out the number of atoms or moles or molecules, whatever it is, is we pulled our coefficients down. Grams is going to be different because the number of grams has to take into account their molar mass. So if I look up iron on my periodic table, iron's molar mass is listed right here. So this is the number of grams per mole of iron. This tells me that it, I have 55.845 grams 
of iron per one mole of iron. We good with that so far? If I actually have four moles of iron in this equation, then in order to figure out how many total grams of iron are in my equation, I would need to multiply that four moles times its molar mass of 55.845 grams. So I'm going to plug that into a calculator. If you don't have a calculator on your desk, you can go ahead and grab one. So 55.845 times 4. Remember that molar mass is going to be exact, so do not round it. You should use all of the digits that are in molar mass the entire time. Whatever you calculate as your answer should be what you write down. Don't round it at all. So 223.38 is what I got. I'm going to write that down. And this makes sense because I have four moles of iron, and then I multiplied the four moles times the molar mass, or the mass per one mole of iron. And I have four atoms of iron. So another way I could. Can I have Jonathan transfer to attendance for a checkout, please? Yes, ma'am. The other way that I can see this is that I have four atoms of iron, and I counted that on this side as well. So that's, again, four times the molar mass of your one iron. Then as far as the oxygen, since oxygen is only in one place in this equation, or on the reactant side, I have three times two oxygens, which we counted as six oxygen atoms. So I can do six times the molar mass of oxygen to figure out how many there are. Or the other way that you can look at this is that I have O2, since oxygen is diatomic, and I would have three O2s, which again would still just give you six atoms of oxygen. So we're going to take the molar mass of oxygen, which is 15.999, and then we'll multiply that by six. And I got 95.994. Bye. And then on my product side, we're going to figure out how many grams of Fe2O3 we have. So remember for this, I would take the molar mass of iron, multiply it by two since there are two of them, and the molar mass of oxygen, multiply it by three because there are three of them. So this one would be... But you don't do it, multiply by the two of them. You will once you have the molar mass. So 55.845 to keep going back to that one. And then 15.999, you'll add those together. So when I put it in my calculator, this is usually what I'm doing. I'll use parentheses and then add it, use parentheses again. That number that you calculate from this would give you the molar mass, meaning grams per mole of Fe2O3. And then the question was, don't you multiply it by two? And the answer is yes, because this will be the molar mass of one mole of that. But if I have two moles of it, I need to multiply it by two. So I'm going to plug in. So basically, you have the reactions Correct, yes. But I want you to solve them independently so that we're basically proving the law of conservation of mass here. So two times 55.845 plus three times 15.999. So for my molar mass, I calculated, oops, um, 159.687. Howdy. Good, how are you? Yes. Fill that in and get that from Ms. Romo over in 1620. Perfect. Okay, thank you. At your earliest convenience today. Thank you. Huh? You got a microphone? Are you singing? Um, yes, actually. We're live right now. If you want to give a shout out on the YouTube channel. Really? You're on the YouTube channel? I, I actually am. That's yeah. Sorry, Andrew. Right. <laughs> That's all right. Hi, hey, Internet. <laughs> Best feature.
guest feature. That should be in the in the the top. It could be used as clickbait. <laughs> Absolutely. I don't know why that makes me so nervous. All right, whatever. We're fine. Continuing on. Um, this says 159.687. Is that what y'all got? And then I would need to multiply that by 2 because I have 2 moles of it. So times 2, 319.374. So that is the total number of grams of Fe203 I have on my product side. And then as Kate pointed out, this is going to equal the exact same thing as all of my reactants added together, which we knew because the law of conservation of mass tells us so, and because I have the same number of total oxygens on my react total oxygens and ions on my reactant side as I do on my product side. So if I have the exact same number of atoms and the atom has a specific weight, then having the same number on both sides from my balanced chemical equation means that the mass would be the same on both sides. So this is my total mass of my products, 319.374, because that is my only product that is made in this reaction. And then if I add these two numbers together, 223.38 plus 95.994, that would give me the exact same answer. So let's prove it. Type it into your calculator. Two twenty-three point three eight plus ninety-five point nine nine four. And 319.374 is exactly what I got. Do you have a question? Are you all okay? Are you? Okay. If you need something, you guys can feel free to speak up. All right. Questions on this section before we move on? Okay. So then we're going on to mole ratios. I'm going to cut that. So... 